to the point. On his congressional recess, Boca Raton's Ted Deutsch hears complaints about President Obama. He needs to get tougher. He came off as a wimp, although I love him. And that's from fellow Democrats. Is that a sign of what he can expect in the coming election year? Welcome to To The Point. I'm Michael Williams. Kelly Dunn is off today. My guest, Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch. He represents the 19th Congressional District, stretching from West Palm Beach to Coral Springs. Thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You're on a listening tour. Uh, talk about the pulse of your constituents right now as it relates to this economy that remains deeply in the doldrums. A lot of people are hurting. There's no question about that. And the one message that I kept hearing over and over is they want Congress to act on their behalf and to try to help create jobs. Briefly, it, as a public yeah. service, you're doing just that with the jobs fair. Talk about that. Sure. We're actually having a jobs fair focused on veterans. Right. Uh, veterans coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan have an unemployment rate, in some cases, in excess of 30%. Mm -hmm. So uh, next Saturday at the Armory in West Palm Beach, we're inviting uh, veterans to come out. We have dozens of employers who are going to be there. It's exactly the kind of thing that, uh, that congressional offices can do to help impact the job situation right on the ground. We're proud to be involved. September 10th, and of course, we'll put that up on WPTV.com so that people know about it. Is President Obama, as one of your constituents said, a wimp when it comes to trying to lay out and lead on a plan for job creation in this country? Well, the president's going to deliver an important speech this week, and uh, I suspect that it's, it's going to have a, a rather bold approach. Uh, that's what's necessary at this point. We need to make the kinds of, of decisions that will help create jobs. We need to focus on infrastructure. We need to, to make sure that there are opportunities to increase manufacturing. Uh, there's a lot that we can and must do. The president's going to lead this week. Uh, it's going to be up to Congress to follow. The speaker's going to have to decide whether it's more important to create jobs in this country or more important for him to appeal to the, the fringe elements in his own party. How much money for that jobs plan, though? Republicans are already saying if it costs another nickel out of the federal treasury, we're not on board. Now, look, you can create an infrastructure bank. Uh, the proposal that's floating out there would require a government investment of $5 billion. That then would be leveraged with private sector money many times that amount. Dollars that are being invested in infrastructure in other countries, we need to get that money back here in this country. We can build roads and bridges, we can address the needs that we have, and we can put people back to work. That's exactly what we ought to be doing. Republicans also argue anytime government gets involved, it makes a mess of it. It needs to be completely privately led. And this infrastructure bank is getting resistance from Republicans. Some uh, of them, I should say. Well, there actually, there's some bipartisan support. In fact, the Chamber of Commerce supports this idea. Mm -hmm. idea. Uh, they understand that if you have a, a separate entity away from the government, independent of the Congress, which is what this would be, that you're going to be able to make decisions that are really in the best interest of, of the country because they're going to focus on where we can create the most jobs. They're going to focus on what makes the most sense for the long term. Uh, that's why it's not going to be a congressional body. And I, I think when people understand how it's going to be structured, it'll, be a, it'll receive an awful lot of support. Top projects in Florida that would be candidates for that infrastructure bank? Uh, there, there are, there are uh, bridge projects and road projects throughout the state. Uh, that are waiting to move forward. Uh, all throughout the country, we know that there are failing bridges and there are roads that need repair. That's the kind of thing. And down in Florida, uh, we have ports that need to be expanded. Uh, we have airports that, that need to be expanded if we're going to be able to compete internationally. That's what this offers. Congressman Deutsch, his base, uh, some argue it's being fractured by what some, even within the president's base, argue is a lack of leadership. Uh, given that they're saying go big, go bold with your job speech next Thursday before a joint session of Congress. What defines big and bold? You've touched on it a bit, but what are the absolute minimums he's got to come out of there with? Well, the American people need to come away from that speech understanding that the president's laid out a very clear plan to help create jobs, that that includes an infrastructure bank, that that includes uh, the kinds of investments necessary. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. No, on. listen, it's the kind of investments that are necessary to build the economy. It includes cracking down on, on the Chinese who manipulate their currency and wind up costing Americans jobs because their products are so artificially low. There's so much, the cost of those products, there's so much that, that we can do to keep people from, from uh, to keep money in people's pockets 
and to also make sure that we're able to move forward and make the investments that we need that will put people back to work. President's talked from the outset about green jobs. There are complaints that unless his speech has a huge component talking about domestic oil and gas drilling that he's not really addressing jobs at all. Some argue the green jobs so far has been a bankrupt attempt to try and create work and he needs to concentrate wholly and fully on domestic oil and gas production. Right, I, wish, I wish some of my colleagues who are saying that had been able to travel with me this past month throughout South Florida from Miami where I had the opportunity to visit uh, people focused on wind energy uh, up into Broward County where FAU is trying to determine how best to, to garner the, the power from the Gulf Stream uh, and all throughout Palm Beach County where there are solar power efforts, there are other wind power biomass it's even in South Florida, with just a little bit of attention from government to make sure that the people are able to, to make these investments, we're going to see tremendous growth in renewable energy. That's the future. How much trouble are Democrats like the president, like you, in if the dismal jobs report just out? Unemployment nationwide stuck at 9.1 percent, double digit unemployment right. in the Palm Beaches and Treasure Coast. If it's like that going into 2012, it would seem, many argue, that Democrats are in deep, deep trouble. Well, it, it's interesting. I think what people will realize is that since we've been back in Congress in January, uh, Speaker Boehner hasn't brought a single jobs bill to the floor, not one. Uh, there are opportunities that we have to do something about jobs, but the Speaker, unfortunately, has chosen to pursue this, this path that is focused more on repealing Medicare, more on uh, taking steps that would actually do damage yeah. to the economy than on creating jobs. Uh, and I think people understand that. They want, they want the Speaker to compromise for the better interest of the country. Congressman Deutsch, uh, Republicans in Congress will also argue tax cuts, drastic cuts in regulation. That's what we need to see. How big a piece should that be, in your estimation, if at all, of the president's job plan? There's a political disconnect between the parties on how much you emphasize pure tax cuts, deregulation over some of the things you're talking about that Republicans, anyway, argue are more government-led. Well, the, the president has been talking about tax cuts and payroll uh, tax he's cuts. He's been talking about payroll tax cuts. Uh, which is one way to put money right back into the hands of middle class families, working families. That's where the focus should be, not on protecting special interest tax breaks for big corporations. Uh, the president is clear about that. Unfortunately, those on the other side seem to be resisting the kind of basic tax fairness which Americans really crave. There's a poll out, discouraging news for the president as we begin to talk about 2012. I say begin, a lot have been talking about it for a year and a half now, it seems. But the Sachs-Mason-Dixon poll, let's take a look, of likely voters conducted at the end of August asked if the election were held today, the 2012 election, who would you vote for? 51% said Mitt Romney, should he win the GOP nomination. 43% Barack Obama. When Rick Perry was the presumptive Republican opponent, he leads the president in this survey 46 to 45%. A lot can change in a year, but bad news early on with people who haven't even clinched a GOP nomination. How does the president, if at all, turn the tide? Florida, I would assume you feel, as most do, the fourth most populous state, right. is an absolute must win for him. Yeah, look, the, the president, understandably, is focused on the economy and is focused on the country, uh, not on the presidential campaign. There's going to be time for that. Uh, what's interesting to note is uh, the, that as this process moves forward, the likely nominee at this point, the one who is clearly in the lead in all the polls, is Rick Perry. Rick Perry is someone who has uh, come out strongly against evolution. He's against, he doesn't believe in global warming. He's against the separation of church and state. Uh, I think someone like that's going to have an awfully tough time down here in South Florida, uh, which is much more moderate than some of the, some of the places where he's been doing so well. Uh, I think we're going to see as this plays out that the focus is going to be on uh, moving the country forward and not on this return to the Bush era policies. During the debt ceiling debate, President Obama indicated that he was willing to compromise on entitlement cuts, not spelled out, but said we need reform of Social Security mm -hmm. and Medicare, even if that might have meant some argued cuts, in return for tax revenue increases. Do you agree, do we eventually have to see some cuts in Medicare and Social Security, whether it's raising the age drastically, uh, indexing them more to retirement benefits or how someone's done in retirement. Must we see that? And if you run away from that, are you really running away from the debt debate as a Democrat? Well, first, a couple points. First of all, it is, um, it, Social Security hasn't created the deficit. That's, that's a line that's been used over and over, and it's absolutely not true. It has, hasn't created. Social Security is a contract. People pay in for their retirement insurance, and when they retire, they receive, they receive back the money that they're owed. So as you look to what, what we need to have happen, remember, President Obama laid out a, a very 
big proposal to try to reduce the deficit. That was a proposal that included some, some issues in Social Security and Medicare that were difficult for us, but it also included uh, revenues which have to be part of the solution. But the complaint has been for the last year and a half or two that the Senate's, uh, the Democrats in the Senate don't put out a budget, that President Obama only budges on deficit reduction after the Republicans go first, that President Obama only talks about this after the Republicans, that Democrats will not put forth their own plan and instead are using scare tactics on Social Security and Medicare when in fact Republicans argue, hey, at least we're being bold enough to say we're going to have to look at big entitlement cuts. Fair critique of you uh, no. Uh, look, it why, is. Why not? Because that's the I'll reality. You, you all haven't presented a plan. The, the, well, the, the reality actually is if you stop to look at what happened in that debate about the debt ceiling, the debate where uh, another leading Republican presidential candidate, Michelle Bachman, said, don't even worry about the debt ceiling. Don't even worry about whether we're going to continue to honor our obligations, right? That sort of, uh, that sort of irresponsible rhetoric was taking place while the president was trying to, to negotiate a deal. He, in fact, laid out a very ambitious plan. It was Speaker Boehner, unfortunately, who walked away from that because he was more focused on trying to appeal to the Tea Party element in his party than he was to try to get a deal done for the American people. That's, not, that's actually what happened. And I think people understand that there needs to be some compromise, but the Speaker's just not willing to do it. But this week, people have already talked about both sides acting like children in Washington. The President cannot even get a joint session of Congress together on the night he wants it. He wanted it on Wednesday night. Now it'll be Thursday, September 8th. And it goes back to what some say is the wimp factor out of the White House. I mean, how do you lead when the House Speaker uh, is, is really dictating to you when you'll go before Congress? And ultimately, as an addendum to that question, do you think the Tea Party-infused politics that we have today is a net plus or minus for this country? Your view. Uh, my view is, listen, the more people who are involved in the process, the better. That's healthy. What's not healthy, however, is staking out a position that, that puts America's economy at risk. And because of the Speaker's constant approach that says, I'm going to listen to the Tea Party first and the American people later, because of that approach, it's been nearly impossible to get anything done to benefit working families, to help seniors at a really tough time, to move the economy forward. The Speaker needs to be willing to compromise. Uh, at the time that his plan failed, uh, after, after he had to pull it, when he didn't have the support, he went to the Tea Party members of his caucus to try to get support instead of reaching across the aisle to Democrats who, who desperately wanted to come up with a compromise on behalf of the American people. And that debate to be continued because Republicans argued the White House was playing some bait and switch on, on the revenue side of that equation. But this debate we'll be having well into 2012. Congressman Great. Deutsch, as always, we thank you for taking time to join us before you head back pleasure. to Washington. Coming up next, our roundtable looks at a presidential candidate's tour of Florida and a gaffe some say she might have made that could come back to haunt her. Back in a moment. Now for our round, round table with News Channel 5 political analyst and coordinator of the American Studies program at Lynn University, Robert Watson, and Brian Crowley, author of the Crowley Political Report. Gentlemen, covered a decent bit of ground with Congressman Deutsch. Your reaction, of course, the big focus on jobs and who gets the credit or who takes the blame if we don't get jobs off the uh, basement floor here in America. Your thoughts? Well, President Obama and the Democrats just can't seem to catch a break. Last week we had another jobs report that showed uh, a zero gain in, in jobs and uh, this is going to create even more pressure as the President goes to give his speech next week and uh, this week and uh, you know for congressmen like Ted Deutsch uh, they you know they're, they're almost like victims of this issue. He's certainly loyal to the President and he can speak a great deal about it, but being in the minority in the House, he's got very little control over the situations that revolve around him. Tough yeah. year for Democrats next year if they can't turn this around, or will there be equal opportunity blame, and how will all of this play out over the next few months as you see it? Well, that's the question. It's hard for a president to get reelected if they're below 50 percent. Obama's between 42 and 48 percent in a lot of the key swing states here, Nevada's and Colorado's and Florida's, Pennsylvania's and Ohio. So that's going to make it tough. I, I think Harry Truman was about one of the few presidents to uh, win an uh, election, uh, and Truman was in the 20s. Uh -huh. But it's going to be tough for Obama if he's below 50 percent. Also, if we don't see some movement on the unemployment rate, if it's still at 9 percent, the problem is, I think, for Obama is that you know, at least in my opinion, the Republicans seemed, and, and the previous president and, and 
corporate misbehavior seem to have caused this economic problem, but the president now owns it. Right. And uh, structurally, I think this thing is going to take years to turn around. So he and his party are in a, a real rock and, between a rock and a hard place. Of course, the interesting thing of all this, and Brian, I want to go to you for a comment. Let's, uh, we have some footage of uh, Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, because the big dynamic here, of course, is who does he ultimately run against? And she made headlines in Florida this week for, among other things, saying that she'd be at least open to the possibility of drilling for oil and gas in the Everglades. She said she considered it if it doesn't damage the environment, and she was able to drop the name of Florida's leading Republican into her speeches in Miami. No surprise there. Listen. I want to elect 13 more Republican, like-minded Republican senators, and I'm thinking on the order of a Marco Rubio. Well, that was going to be a crowd pleaser in Little Havana, I can assure you of that for Marco Rubio. But your thoughts about that? She also made other comments about God, hurricanes, and earthquakes. And Democrats are really looking at the calculus of politics about who they ultimately face. Now, she's really running behind Romney and Perry, but to me, that's a very interesting dynamic. Brian, first you. Well, obviously in Miami, if you say great things about Marco Rubio, you're going to get a standing ovation. So she hits a home run with that. The Everglades drilling? The Everglades drilling was just, it, it was a little bit like being in an Iowa and not uh, supporting uh, ethanol. ethanol. It's, uh, right. uh, she just was tone deaf on the idea that you could drill in the Everglades. I mean, you know, uh, and I've done some work for the Everglades Foundation, so let me just uh, offer that disclosure. But. Uh, you know, there is no alternate resource for water. You might have alternate resources for energy. You can talk about windmills and everything else. But Florida is in serious trouble with our water supply in the years to come. And, and a lot of people get that. And the fact that she came into the state and talked about drilling in the Everglades, which is also just a natural treasure, showed a little tone deafness. Well, really, Michelle Bachman saying something irresponsible? <laughs> <laughs> which day? Uh, you know, if, if the campaign doesn't work out for her, she can do the Kardashians or uh, reality TV. Well, but, 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 you know, but, but she, but she, you know, she well, has her base, although the, the, well, that, that's the point. The, 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 the God sending us a message on hurricane and earthquakes. God's trying to get rid of Obama uh, now with yeah. earthquakes. And, but, but here's the thing with her. The, the, the kicker with her is she's got a 20 percent loyal base. No matter what she does, they're going to come out and support her. And that base likes red meat. They like this stuff. They like the in-your-face, they like the controversy, they like the, the wild comments. So among her base, she's just doing herself a favor. What I was surprised about was the Everglades comment, not the other crazy stuff she says. Florida is the biggest swing state in the country. It could be the most important state again next year. And uh, not everybody in the state has this view that we should just drill, baby, drill. So that could come back and haunt her. Interesting times coming up. A big speech, as we've been saying throughout, planned this week by the president. Can it turn the tide? Stay with us more in a moment. This coming Thursday, President Obama will be presenting his much-anticipated and debated jobs plan in a speech to a joint session of Congress. He says some of the proposals will come from a tour he made of the Midwest last month, a tour that, at least by many, was panned because they felt that there wasn't enough meat to go along with the appearances throughout the Midwest. Nonetheless, as we look at the president, let me talk to you, gentlemen. Obviously pivotal for the whole country how this dynamic and debate goes on. Your thoughts about... Uh, the absolute litmus test and, and goals he, he must achieve, and also vis-a-vis -vis what Republicans hope to do to counter this with their own prescriptions for economic recovery. I, I think this is an absolute turning point mm -hmm. for this presidency, and in some ways the kickoff of his campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, this economy and, and unemployment has to be better or on the road to being better by this time next year, or Obama's going to be in a great deal of trouble. I, and, you know, from a Florida perspective, you know, our unemployment is much higher than the rest of the nation, 11 percent here, about 15 percent in the Treasure Coast. Uh, you know, and people, despite all the shenanigans that go on between the Republicans and Democrats, they want solutions and they want to see some progress being made. And I think largely they think, you know, when you had this little argument last week over the scheduling of the debate right. between Boehner, right. I, I right. think most people shake their heads I, about I that. As part of your comments, though, and I just want to throw in for you thinking, Robert, why isn't it equally pivotal for Republicans? Everybody owns this economy. Well, I think what the trending is going that the president's seen as the owner of the economy. Remember, the buck stops here. Yeah. It's the White House, first and foremost. I agree with Brian. I think this is an absolutely pivotal speech for him. I would encourage, if I was advising Obama, to swing for the fence. Meaning what? 
okay, there's got to be some things in there for jobs, like the uh, infrastructure, which is an investment in our country. Uh, it's not just Democrats that use roads, bridges, and cancer wings in the hospital. It's all Americans. This is something everyone should get behind. Payroll tax cut. And there he can draw a difference between himself and the Republicans. The Republicans in the debt deal did not want one penny raised on the wealthiest millionaires in the country, but they won't give the middle class a payroll tax cut. I think he's got to look at things like trade. We have a Korean trade bill, which the Republicans are killing, which will sell a lot, a lot of American cars there. But swinging for the fence, I'd like to see him even look at tax reform, addressing mortgage reform, and some other issues. He needs the big ticket item. Uh, he needs to really come out swing and swing for the fence. And everybody in Washington waiting to see if politicians on both sides will shed the acrimony and act like grown-ups to be continued well, I think there. I have the answer there. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, gee, I'm surprised no. about that. No. Back in a moment. <laughs> The Crowley closer. Well, on Friday, Mitt Romney said Florida will be huge, and it starts this month with the uh, Florida Convention, CPAC, and two debates. So it's going to be an exciting month for Florida Republicans. Mm -hmm. As always in Florida, the political landscape shaped here. We thank you, gentlemen, as always, for your insights. Thanks for spending time with us on today's To the Point. Have a great week, everyone.